Southern Women's Athletic Conference and the NCAA. The more good sportsmanship by student athletes, coaches, and spectators. Profanity, racial or sexist comments, or other intimidating actions directed at officials, student athletes, coaches, or team representatives, including singling out anyone by name, number, or position, are grounds for removal from the site of competition and other disciplinary action. Public intoxication, as well as the consumption and possession of alcoholic beverages and or tobacco violent products is strictly prohibited. Persons throwing objects and participating in other acts of conflict with good sportsmanship and fair play are subject to rejection. Country also requires that you wear your masks indoors, except for eating or drinking. Please do not use flash photography. Thank you for your cooperation in supporting the participants and officials in a positive manner. Ladies and gentlemen, after player introductions, we will go right into the game. So, here is the starting lineup for the University of St. Thomas Celts. Number five, a sophomore guard, Michaela Hamilton. Good evening, Tiger fans. We are live from Calgar Gym at Trinity University in San Antonio, Texas. And we have a real treat after an incredible game. If you were with us on Tiger Network, the men pulling out a big victory over St. Thomas. It's almost unfair to be this lucky to get yet another basketball game right after that. We have the same two teams with the women's teams playing here. and. Ryan, this Tigers women's team, winners of 11 in a row. No team hotter than this Tigers squad. And it's not just 11 straight wins, Brian. It's 11 straight wins by an average of 24 points. They've been absolutely piling it on their opponents. Too much to handle, especially since the start of conference play. Scoring almost 80 a game and shooting 43% from the field. Coach Hills been able to keep his preferred starting five out there with Maggie Shipley, Haley Coleman, Maggie Robbins, Ashlyn Milton, and Ava Limoncello out on the court from the start tonight for the home team. And on the other end for the visiting Celts, we have Hayden Morin, Jade Evans, Michaela Hamilton, Alex Castillo, and Olivia Enga. Celts out of St. Thomas in Houston, coming in with a record of three and nine, but they are a physical team with plenty of capable players. We know that they've had a couple of close games this season. Five losses just by single digits, so they play well and have been in these games, just haven't been able to put many in the win column. But should be a good one here from San Antonio. Both teams getting ready to tip. And they'll be looking to put their last matchup with Trinity behind them quickly, Brian. 84 to 56, the Tigers took it in Houston. And we'll see you know, if Trinity are hampered in the first half like they were in that game and eventually ran out big winners in the second half. Absolutely, Ryan. And here, officially underway in San Antonio, Michaela Hamilton handles the point guard duties for the Celts. Early turnover here. Tigers, Robbins on the fast break, gets it to Shipley and down to Coleman who is fouled as she goes up with it. So where the Tigers love to be, both the men's and women's teams love to force turnovers and get in transition, and Coleman to the line quickly. And it was really good active hands on the defensive end for Trinity, and a good eye for a pass. They bounce through the lane to find Coleman, who's no good with the first. But to your point, Trinity really able to run in transition with how often they force these turnovers. And the Tigers coming off an exciting one in Colorado Springs as Coleman misses both free throws. And a jump ball will keep it with the Tigers. So two missed free throws, but they'll keep the ball on their end. But the Tigers coming off an exciting victory in Colorado Springs. Coleman, the one that brought the victory home for the Tigers. Game-winning layup with just under a second left. Tigers going crazy on the bench. If you saw that one on the road and Coleman gets back to work under the basket, she gets the first two for the Tigers and they go right into this full court pressure. And another turnover. So that pressure working early. Lemoncello to Shipley and she puts it up easily. Great start for the Tigers here. Suffocating defense to start the game for Trinity.
And that pressure just so evident they don't give you a second to breathe, but the Celts do get it across half court this time. Castillo puts it up, but it is no good. Overshoots the basket and Robbins back with it. Lemoncello looking to Coleman down on the post. Shipley unable to corral it early, but she puts a nice move on, just unable to get it to go. But great ball movement early for these Tigers. They're up 4-0. Wide open there, and knocking down the three is Hayden Morin. And the three ball hasn't been falling for her this season, just 23%. But a big make there to get the Celts on the board for the first time. Coleman looked to have some room there, but trying to get the pass to Shipley, but it's intercepted by Morin. And now going the other way and fouled. Morin with a nice couple of possessions here with the three-pointer. And now going to the line for a couple of free throws. And an early substitution. Nelly Rodriguez coming in for the Celts. It'll send Alex Castillo to the bench. And Morin can hit her season average with a pair of makes here at the free throw line. She's not used to being this involved in the offense. First one, though, rattles out. And that's actually Jade Evans, who switched numbers, at least on our end. We had her as number 10, number 20 now for this game, and she's the one that heads to the bench early. Morin able to tie things up here at four. And even though the Tigers, Ryan, you mentioned with that big victory, 84 to 56, they got off to a little bit of a slow start and the Celts holding the Tigers to just over 30 points in the first half before they made plenty of adjustments and bursted for 51. But they hung in there in the first half in Houston. Yeah, and talking to Trinity assistant Joe Shotland in the lead up to this game, you know, despite the margin of victory in the end, it wasn't a game that they were proud of. They turned it over way more than they're used to doing. And that'll be something that they look to rectify in this game. They've already turned it over just once compared to two for the Celts, but now that'll be leveled up as the inbounds pass goes straight out of play. Yeah, the turnover there, and you, you talked about it, nailed it right there, 25 turnovers, the most they've had all year. So it was not a game they were particularly proud of, but they were still able to escape with that victory. Tigers able to get the pressure set up. And right away, Robbins takes it away and puts it up for two. So you can see that pressure works so well and gets plenty of easy buckets for the Tigers. First break of the evening. Tigers up six to four. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back on Tiger Network. Welcome back to Tiger Network and the Celts excited to try to beat the Tigers on the court trying to avoid this pressure but the Tigers get there and you see just smothering the Celts resulting in another steal and another two easy points. Not only did the Tigers have their most turnovers but the Celts themselves had 31 turnovers against Trinity. Yeah, and don't sleep on that pass from Robbins her second straight steal on the inbound and she was able to dish it from the deck up for two points for the Tigers. But another three goes down for the Celts, this time Alex Castillo. So a nice start from beyond the arc for the Celts. Keeps them within one. 
Lemoncello with a nice drive and she gets that one to go. No one there to help and she had an easy lane to the bucket. And now she gets the steal, the overhead pass to Shipley. And the Tigers making it look easy in the open court early on. Yeah, and fitting that Limoncello is involved in the action as we heard a lot about her from Coach Shotland, her toughness, her consistency, and really playing above the amount of experience she's had in the college game. It's been a fixture in the starting lineup for Trinity this year. She thinks about a three-pointer and ends up traveling. Starting every game, the only player to do so for Coach Hill amongst all the turmoil in the starting five. And someone who contributes in a lot of different ways. She can score as she did when she got her career high, 17 against Worcester State. But she's been scoreless in the last two games, but that has not meant she has not contributed. She is great at getting the ball to her teammates and extremely tough in the big moments as they had in Colorado, that close game where she really contributed. That shot good to go from Ellis. Raven Ellis had 10 points off the bench in their most recent game against Austin College. St. Thomas falling to the ruse, but Ellis with nice contribution off the bench and does a nice job early here. Another travel that time against Coleman. A little bit of a rough start for Coleman, maybe a hangover from that exciting climax in Colorado. Hamilton staring down Shipley as she tries to get the ball in and will be called for a turnover as she was not allowed to move on the baseline there out of the t off the turnover. So the ball goes right back to the Tigers. Yeah, just a moment of inexperience there for the sophomore guard. Robbins fires it into Lemoncello who gets it right to Shipley in the post. And that one too strong off the glass. Kelts coming the other way. Olivia Anga gets it to Ellis. And that one just rattles out and Shipley collects the rebound. And she's taking it herself cross court before she is stopped. Has to find Milton over to Robbins. Screen set by Coleman. And the Tigers trying to get into this half court offense, but the Celts doing a nice job really defensively. And now the steal nearly by Morin. Robbins tracking it down diving bodies all over the floor and it looks like a jump ball no a timeout called before heads up play by Ellis calling a timeout and the ball will stay with St. Thomas so plenty of hustle and effort early here we'll take the timeout with them Tigers up 12 to 9 Welcome back to Tiger Network, where the Tigers have turned it over three times in the last minute and a half. They lead by three early on here in the first quarter. Yeah, those turnovers and a couple of big threes for the Celts, allowing them to stick around, but really good reach around steal for Robbins. And now the Tigers run in transition. Robbins to the cup, too strong with the layup, but they get the offensive board. Substitution, new player here for the Tigers, Carly Leong off the bench. And we get another new face in here. Kelly Simmons replaces Haley Coleman. And mentioned Coleman with that big layup to win the game against Colorado. And perhaps no one more excited than Kelly Simmons off the bench. Coach Cameron Hill having to contain her and keep her off the court, but she was just so excited for her best friend. Yeah, they compete on the floor night in, night out, in practice and in games. This three's up off the glass, just barely too strong. But like you said, great relationship off the court and that really allows for this team dynamic to, to flourish. Absolutely, it was a sight to see 
as the Tigers beat their fellow Tigers in the SCAC, and we'll see them once again here on Sunday, right here at Calgard Gym, as Robins denied going to the bucket. Raven Ellis all over that one, and the Celts bench fired up. Eleven left on the shot clock. Leong trying to take it herself. She pulls up from mid-range, unable to get it to go, and as she tries to get her own miss, she will foul number 15. That is Olivia Anga, who will now head to the bench. Jade Evans in for her. Yeah, almost two and a half minutes without any points on the board for Trinity. Three turnovers and four misses from the floor. As their momentum has come to a bit of a halt here. And you can see this time Hamilton doing a good job staying stationary, but she is really struggling to get the ball in. And right here, will she be able to get it across the half court? She barely does with 20 seconds left on the shot clock. And then a nice job putting it up, Mia McGee. So what looked to nearly be a 10 second violation turns into two points for St. Thomas. Yeah, and McGee almost 20 minutes coming off the bench tonight. So definitely play a big role. McGee did not play against Trinity last week. That layup from Shipley just off the front of the rim. So we've seen a couple from her just miss. And again, diving bodies on the court. And a jump ball this time will be called. Ball stays with St. Thomas this time. And Shipley's been involved. She's shot three or seven from the floor. But uncharacteristically silent is Ashlyn Milton, who's yet to put anything on the stat sheet, not even a shot attempt or a rebound so far for one of the leading stars of this Trinity team. Still out there right now with three and a half minutes to go in the quarter. We'll see if she can get it going before she heads to the bench. And that was another strong drive to the basket from McGee, but this one falling out. Celts had a chance to take the lead here in the first quarter, and there is Milton, who you mentioned, scoreless and unable to get that three to go. Ball bounces out of bounds. We'll stay with the Tigers. Milton averaging just over 14 points a game and had 19 points in Colorado. And more importantly, five steals, including the one that led to the Tigers getting the final possession and that big game-winning layup from Coleman. So we'll see if she's able to heat up. Decides to not put up another three instead. Off the glass, bank open late here at 8 p.m. And she gets on the board. Seven minutes into this first quarter. Tigers forcing a steal. Bailey Timmons in off the bench, gets it to Milton. This time she does shoot for three off the back of the iron. But three Tigers all over Morin, who barely is able to get the ball to McGee. And then McGee tries to float it across the court, but then she gets it right back. Nope, it's Nelson who finds Timmons underneath. Crazy play here from both teams. This time the ball goes out of bounds and it'll go to the Tigers, but five turnovers for Trinity, 11 already for St. Thomas and it's resulted in some pretty chaotic play here. Yeah, take a breath there, Brian. It was just a hot potato tossing back and forth between the two teams before Trinity finally Put it up and in for two points. Milton with the great pass to Leong and she gets hit hard from behind as she had beat the entire St. Thomas defense and Raven Ellis trying to catch up on that one will foul Milton, or Leong. Yeah, Leong, a victim of how good the shot fake was. Ended up taking a ton of contact there as the defender came down on her back. Right now we have four players off the bench. The only starter in there, Ashlyn Milton. We have Emily Nelson who will get the inbounds pass and she gets it to Milton and that one just bounces out. Traveling called on St. Thomas. Took a little bit there, but everybody in the gym knew that that was a travel. Trinity now 11 more shots than St. Thomas thanks largely to those 13 turnovers. Yeah, St. Thomas shooting 50%, but just on eight shots. So if they're able to get the ball up more often, 
they'd be happy with that, but just unable to get it across the half court line much of the time. And here struggling to balance with the ball and keep her dribble is Ellis. So another turnover, 13 with still two minutes left in the first quarter. And when we're this far into a game and you've got more turnovers than shots, you know it's been really difficult to advance the ball. Trinity's defense suffocating as Milton has another three clang off the iron. Ball stays with St. Thomas as Adriana Chavez did a nice job getting the defensive board, giving the Celta opportunity at the other end. This is a young Celts team compared to their men's team who is so experienced and has a lot of seniors on their roster. Freshmen and sophomores everywhere you look for this women's squad. They too, like their men counterparts, tr transferring from the NAIA to Division Three as that one just rattles out. Raven Ellis thought she had two there, but instead it'll go to the Tigers but this is a St. Thomas team that won the SCAC regular season in 2019-2020, unable to compete in the tournament because they're uneligible to qualify for the NCAA tournament. But those players that were here for the Celts no longer on the roster, and so this is a young team that is still trying to get a sense of what it's like playing together. Losers of three in a row. I mentioned that three and nine record, just a couple of tough losses by single digits. Yeah, they're a young team, but they're led by an experienced head coach, Jay Cross, who was you know, a fixture in the WNBA throughout her career, played here in the San Antonio Silver Stars, was a part of Team Australia for over a decade, and followed that up with seven years as the assistant at Rice at the D1 level. So definitely the right person to lead this team back. But of course, dealing with the rebuild right now, it's never easy. Yeah, really an incredible resume for Coach Cross as that one somehow goes for Leong falling on the floor, but it doesn't matter. She gets those two Celts quickly up the other end. Morin with the three. And that one no good. So she hit an early one but has missed her last couple. And Trinity with 37 seconds left in the, ha in the first quarter. Firmly in control now, up nine. Leong drives again, this time not able to get it off the glass. St. Thomas will hold here for the last shot. For Ryan, you mentioned Coach Cross playing for the Silver Stars. Can't say how sad I am that we no longer have the WNBA franchise here. They've become the Las Vegas Aces as the Celts knock down a three. Alex Castillo cuts the deficit to six but quickly the other way, Simmons gets the nice feed from Nelson, and they'll head into the second quarter up eight. So a little bit of a sloppy start early for both teams, but the Tigers pick things up at the end of the quarter. They lead 22 to 14. We'll be right back for the second quarter on the Tiger Network. Welcome back to Tiger Network, where these two teams shooting the same percentage, 41.7, but on very different outlooks. 
because the Celts have just gotten up 12 shots compared to Trinity's 24, and that's as a result of plenty of turnovers, 13 to be exact. And to start the second quarter, a foul drawn by Carly Leong. She'll be headed to the line. Leong really active, cutting to the basket. We saw that spectacular finish towards the end of the first quarter, and this time she's fouled. A player that was you know, so influential for her previous school, Pomona Pitzer, is the Skyak Newcomer of the Year. A lot of that coming with outside shooting, which hasn't come down from California with her just yet. But she's finding ways to get it done, and she's described by Coach Shotland as, you know, one of the offensive leaders, especially with this second unit. One of the toughest players on the floor at any given time. And really some uncharacteristic misses at the line. Leon coming into today second in the SCAC, shooting 80% from the free throw line, but a couple of misses there, unable to take advantage of the foul to start the quarter. But the Tigers get right back into their pressure. This time, Michaela Hamilton able to get it across and thought she might put up the three again. Castillo had one right before the first quarter ended, but instead she tried to fake it out, drive to the mid-range area, but didn't result in points for her. And now Hamilton the other way. She spots up just off the back iron. St. Thomas able to run with Trinity to this point as that one tips off Simmons and out of play. It's always a war of attrition, particularly with teams that use their starters for 30 plus minutes. Uh, towards the end of games, you expect to see that wear and tear as Castillo goes long here. Quarterback style pass intercepted by Simmons. And Trinity with, you know, as Coach Shotland said, eight or 10 players that could start, they're that caliber. And they're able to keep the energy up all game. Three in the corner, no good from Bailey Timmons. Things very rarely pretty slow on this end of the half court. We've seen so much chaos, but taking advantage of that is Olivia Anga, averaging 12 points a game, and she had 16 versus Austin in the defeat. But she gets on the board for the first time. That one short from Kelly Simmons. Morin taking a lot of contact and it took a second, but she will be headed to the line. Saw plenty of contact there and earning the foul and the free throws. It's such a difficult game for Trinity to play with that big game against Colorado, that rematch on the horizon coming Sunday against a team you know, you've beat handedly very recently, uh, and despite not playing well, as Coach Shotland admitted to us. So, you know, look for these mental struggles to be worked out by Trinity over the course of the game. A lot of times they're in a battle with themselves mentally right now. And this Tigers team has won 13 straight SCAC games since losing to Colorado twice in that shortened 2021 season. But the last time Trinity lost to a non-Colorado team in the SCAC in the regular season was this very St. Thomas team. They've only done it once. Just one in four are the Celts against Trinity. But they pulled off a victory back in 2020, 83 to 81 over the Tigers. So this is a team that knows how to win and has beaten Trinity before. We'll see if they can hang against this tough pressure that the Tigers don't let up all game long. Yeah, and looking back to that win for St. Thomas, you know, it was a 34-point game in the other matchup between the two teams that season. So definitely a warning sign for Trinity not to look past the Celts tonight. And Coleman trying to thread the needle there. Looked like she could complete the pass to Timmons, but instead it goes out of bounds and a turnover. So Coleman with just two points and four turnovers, so a tough start for the senior. It hasn't been a beautiful game so far, Brian. 22 combined turnovers, and we're just 13 minutes into the game. The three balls looked good for St. Thomas, although they don't knock down that one. And that's kept them in this game to this point. And th one against three there, Molly Pretty was waiting for her teammates, but in the meantime, getting fouled. 
Fellow number two, Amber Lily Long from first. Team fellow number two. Shipley with a nice spin move, just unable to finish there. And a jump ball will be called on that one. So Shipley with a great move and had the bucket right there, but just unable to get that. And the ball will be going to St. Thomas. Plenty of jump balls already too. We've seen these teams dive to the floor already a couple of times. And that's just an example of Trinity against themselves. Shipley missing the open layup. Very uncharacteristic of her in the maroon and white since she's come over from Amherst. That one no good from Hamilton. A nice job by Coleman stepping up and getting in her face to contest that shot. Made it at least a little bit more difficult. And now on the other end, Coleman double teamed immediately. She's able to find Nelson who swings it to Shipley. Coleman has some trouble getting possession of the ball. And then that one can't go. Look to be possibly some contact there, but no foul called. And Hamilton goes the other way. She's tied up by Leong, but Hamilton able to find the open Enga, but just off the back iron. And Kelts a couple of opportunities to pull even closer, but they've been unable to take advantage as the Tigers going a little cold here to start the second quarter. Coleman trying to change things, but unable to get that one. Now one for four. Really tough start to the game for Coleman. Though I will say I definitely want to put out a strong case for the foul call on the previous possession that she didn't get. Coleman, historically one of the best, most efficient scorers in Trinity history. She's currently leading that statistic in team history with over 60% from the floor. So she's not usually one to miss those gimmies. Sure, there'll be some course correction as this game goes on. Two starters come back, three starters come back in now for Coach Hill. It's Amber Bourgeois at the line for St. Thomas. She's missed a couple of early threes, so she tried driving to the basket and succeeding in getting a foul call, but that first one, no good. Kelts looking to end an almost three minute scoring drought. They will not do that as the Tigers remain up five despite not making a bucket in quite a while. That's why the starters are back in there. We've got the starting five out there with Lemoncello getting it over to Robbins. Finds Coleman at the free throw line. Trying to get the ball movement going and Lemoncello decides to pull up herself. Milton nearly gets the offensive rebound. Enga fouled as she goes up, so she's gonna try to end this scoring drought of over three minutes now. Yeah, you mentioned the big performance for Olivia Enga against Centenary this year, 21 and nine for her in that one. And she was honored with the Scott Player of the Week Award for week nine. She definitely has the capabilities to come up big in this game. Currently trailing by five. And when we come back, Inga will look to end the over three minute scoring drought for the Celts. Welcome back to Tiger Network. Olivia Anga will be headed to the line in a rough start to this second quarter for both teams. St. Thomas with just three points and Trinity scoreless to start the second quarter. What are you seeing from them, Ryan? 
just missing shots that they usually make. I mean, it's uncharacteristic of them on the offensive end, forcing some things, turning the ball over where they don't usually, as Enga's able to knock down the free throw. And with Robbins back out there, look for Trinity to amp up the pressure again on defense and for her to try and guide this offense back into their groove. First free throw good, but the second one just off. So Celts within four with just under five minutes here in the second quarter. So looking a lot like last week in Houston where they were able to stay close with the Tigers. Milton makes the three and looked like she was pushed a little bit on that one too, but gets it to go nonetheless. Let's see if that gets it going for the Tigers and Milton especially. Yeah, huge make and the assist for Robbins, creating the shots for her teammates, something she does so well. And as you said, Robbins ramping up the pressure, nearly forcing the steal. Hamilton gets her own miss off the floater. Morin with the three way off. And Shipley now calms it down, look to be running in the fast break. But Robbins to Milton. Lemoncello right back to Milton. And she knew that one was off, fighting for her own rebound. But it'll go to the Celts, and she believes that should have stayed with Trinity. Not only that, Milton's called for the foul going for the rebound. That previous release from Hayden Warren looked nothing like the release that she used to make the three-pointer earlier in the game. It was just way off. And we head back to that end now for some more St. Thomas free throws as they're in the bonus. Yeah, we've seen them be aggressive getting to the basket and they're being rewarded now with four minutes left in the second quarter. They will be headed to the line. We'll see if they can take advantage, but not able to do so yet. Now three for nine, under 40%. Yeah, and this hasn't been an issue for them this season. There have been some issues, but their free throw shooting has been good, over 70% as a team. That one finally good. Six misses already from the charity stripe. And against a team as talented as the Tigers, you really can't waste those opportunities from there. Well, six misses, and they're down by six. I mean, it's easy as that. They've passed up opportunities, and they could be right in this game. Yeah, and you know, it's only a matter of time before the Tigers get it going offensively. They showed it last week in Houston. So if you're the Celts, want to put as much pressure as possible, make the Tigers sweat a little bit, but they're able to maintain this six-point lead and might grow if they're able to get hot here at the end of the half. Milton can move in to lead all scorers if she knocks down both free throws here, despite a cold start from the floor, one of five from behind the arc. Junior from Amarillo gets both to go. Been a rough start from the line for the Tigers as well, so nice to see those free throws go down. Get them to four from eight, 50%. Hamilton so focused when she's in the inbounds duty. Having to work so hard just to get it in with Shipley guarding her. McGee gets it to Morin. Hamilton spots up for three, but that one will not go, and Robbins quickly the other way. Coleman trying to post up. Rodriguez doing a nice job keeping the ball away from her, though. But now she does find the ball, and she spots up and gets it to go. So good from that range. Hard to stop when she can just turn around and put that shot up with ease. That pass way over the head of McGee from Rodriguez. And the turnover problems just continue for the Celts now 15. They've done a nice job cutting it, had 13 in the first quarter, so just two here. But if they want to keep their chances against this Tigers team, they're going to have to cut down on their turnovers, make their free throws, and keep playing well defensively. Milton open for three. Will get the rebound after it was poked out and Coleman again doubled as soon as she gets it somehow able to get it to Lemoncello in the corner with a nice move 
Great bucket for Ava Lemoncello driving in from the corner. Nice dribble and finish. Tigers up double digits. And thinking back to the last offensive possession for St. Thomas where they threw it away, now you can really draw a direct line. Ineli Rodriguez on one end battling with Haley Coleman for post position. Then she finally catches the ball, wants to do something with it, and she's so fatigued from what she was doing on defense that she just throws it away. So that you know just shows you how Trinity can wear teams down in different ways. Absolutely, and a frustrated Rodriguez walking back the other way with her head down. Another turnover. She just lost the ball there. Two minutes to go here in the second quarter. Trinity hasn't been pretty so far, but they find themselves up 12. You can see how hard the Tigers are working to get the ball to Coleman. And that one rattles in. We've seen so many rattle out. Finally one that looked like it was going to go out that actually goes in. Yeah, Coleman getting back towards her career, 60% from the floor. Now three is six. And as I mentioned, starting to wear down Anneli Rodriguez, who's put up a really good battle for Coleman down low so far in this game. But you can only keep up that pace for so long against one of the conference's very best post players. Adriana Chavez in. Adriana Chavez back in for the Celts. She'll replace Hamilton. And Chavez will have to have the tough job of getting it in, but she does for a moment, and the foul called on Robbins. A dumbfounded glance from Robbins towards the official. Not typical for the inbounds pass to be such an exciting play, but with both these Tigers teams, you have to watch it every time because of the full court pressure that they enable. Trinity now on an 11-2 run as the first free throw goes down. They've started to pull away as we expected, although they're once again at 33 points, which is all they put up in the first half in Houston. As another three-pointer is off the mark for Morin. Yeah, and Morin hit that three early in the game, looked really good, but the last couple of misses have been pretty drastic for Morin. After she missed that free throw, missed another three. Coleman Simply continuing. thinking about the three there instead, takes it to the basket and passes it out to Milton, gets her own miss and puts it back up for two. Yeah, and it's Coleman continuing to get the better of Rodriguez. Got the block at one end, leading to the two points for Milton at the other. Nice move there. Just work, not working out, but a great move there from Castillo, getting Coleman to freeze a little bit and have the open layup. She's frustrated. Just six makes from the field for the Celts. Six for 28 for a percentage of 21%. They are seventh in the SCAC, shooting 32% typically from the field. The Tigers won't quite be able to take it into the half. About a four second difference between shot and game clock, but it won't matter as Celts get a steal. Rodriguez holds for the final shot, gets it to Castillo, trying to direct her offense. Gets the screen from Rodriguez who just bobbles the ball and then hails it, tries to get a miracle shot, but nowhere close. Tigers not scoring for the first five minutes in the second quarter, but they are able to take a 15-point lead into the half as they have really clamped down defensively, holding St. Thomas to just six points in that second quarter. Ashlyn Milton leading the way leading all scorers with nine points. Haley Coleman and Maggie Shipley adding six respectively for the Celts. We've got Morin and Castillo both with six points. Ryan, your thoughts before we head to the half. I think it's a very similar half to what we saw in Houston. Trinity not living up to their own expectations of themselves and yet they're still in firm control of the game. And I think there'll be some things to iron out for Coach Hill 
But overall, I mean, this is a game they're expected to win, and it looks like they're well on their way to a 12th straight victory. Make sure to tune in for the second half, just about 14 minutes away here on Tiger Network. We'll be right back to bring it to you.
Welcome back to Tiger Network. Just about ready for the second half of action here. Your Tigers up 35 to 20 over St. Thomas. And a little bit of a choppy first half for both teams, but not something we're completely in strange of seeing because this very matchup resulted in a tough first half for both teams as well. Last week in Houston, the Tigers scoring just 33 points in the first half before rattling off 51 in the second half. And earlier today, got to talk to assistant coach Joe Shotland, and he mentioned that often the word trial run isn't necessarily the best comparison, but just trying to get a sense for who really has it that night. And then the second half, much better opportunity for the coaches to go to those players. So we'll see if the adjustments have been made in the locker room. But the Tigers missing a couple of free throws to start, so not a great omen for the second half. Yeah, I'll be honest. I mean, they're going to look for who has the hot hand. The answer is really nobody. I mean, Milton leads all scores with nine, but that's on 30% three of 10 shooting as the Celts cut into that 15-point lead with a layup underneath there. Shipley didn't really get going. Three of eight shooting, just six points in the game. Haley Coleman, we saw her really struggle at the start with four turnovers. And there's a big three. Limoncello, maybe the one that you'd point to as she knocks down that three up to seven points, three of four. She's been efficient, if nobody else. And it's been defense into offense for Trinity. Yeah, and she's open once again, but that one not good, but an offensive rebound. Shipley fighting through some contact and puts it right back. Milton then nearly forces a steal before Robbins does herself, but before the steal will be credit to her, a foul which we've seen plenty of today. Tigers with 10 personal fouls. Celts with eight. Yeah, it wasn't my favorite call there. I thought Robbins got a lot of the ball reaching in to steal it. Much easier call that time as Anga stepped out of play just below us. Brian, I think your view was obstructed there, but it was clear from where I'm sat. And think of how frustrating it must be for these teams to turn it over so much. If just watching it can get a little restless, I'm sure that they're tired of giving the ball up so easily and not being able to put up shots. That's what they're wanting to do, wanting to run their offenses smoothly. And neither team has really gotten to do so. But the Tigers coming out of the half with a 7-0 run in just the last 40 seconds. So... Nice talk from Cameron Hill in the locker room. Gets the Tigers ready here. And we'll take a quick break as a timeout has been called. We'll be right back on the Tiger Network. Welcome back to Tiger Network. During that timeout, noticing that it's Joe Shotland, the assistant coach on the sidelines, leading the way for the Tigers. Coach Cameron Hill, not on the sideline coming out of the locker room. Coach Shotland, who we got to talk to, had a nice conversation with him today. He's doing all the head coaching duties today, you know, talking to us, media availability, you know, we grilled him. By far my favorite assistant women's basketball coach here at Trinity, which if you check the website, just one assistant coach, but we love Joe. Limoncello looking really good off the bounce. That was something 
Coach Shotland mentioned to us, and she's been able to drive to the rim a couple of times. Morin with the nice give and go to Anga. So Anga has started nicely coming out of the locker room. She's got a couple of buckets, up to six points. She had 13 off the bench against Trinity last week. And on the other end, Shipley doing what she does so well, going to her left. And then right back to the pressure on Hamilton. Hamilton probably going to see Shipley in her nightmares tonight. And Shipley right there goes underneath Hamilton and scoops it up for the score. Yeah, and the Tigers have really worked it out. The ball's moving a lot smoother. The shots are falling with regularity. And this looks like the Trinity team that we expect to see on a game-by-game -game basis. Yeah, those five minutes without points in the second quarter, just super rare for this Tigers team that is number one in the SCAC with 79 points a game. And that same mark is good for 14th in Division Three. So this team used to scoring and scoring often. So coming out of this third quarter, a lot more with what we're used to seeing. Castillo draws the foul there on Coleman. Coleman started cold from the floor, just one for four, but she's made her last two. She does have two personal fouls now. And you mentioned the Trinity offense up there in the national rankings. The other stat that they really stand out in is the turnover margin. They're 15th in the country with plus 7.7. .7. And today they're going to extend that by the looks of things. They're currently a plus 8 in the turnover department, 19 to 11. Haven't really taken care of the ball in keeping with the standard they hold themselves to. But the ball has been moving much better in the second half, and Milton's been the one to profit off of it, up to 13 points now. And it doesn't feel like it'll be very long, Ryan, before we start to see these Tigers officially in the top 25 for D3 hoops. They're already near the top 25. They've been receiving votes for the last several weeks. They stand at 12-2 and two this year, and those two losses by a small, small margin, as small as it gets, losing by just two to number 14 Harden Simmons at the time. And against East Texas Baptist, who was ranked second in the nation at the time, losing by just six up in Belton. So those two losses, plus this 11 game winning streak, lets me know and lets anybody who has seen this team know that this is a talented team that will be up with the best pretty soon. Castillo able to knock in another three there. She's got a couple makes from outside. But to your point, you know, this team is really on fire and they're putting up the wins. They're doing all they can, beating the competition that's in front of them. It's just going to be about people that are in the top 25 losing a game or two to open up space for Coach Hill's Tigers. And Haley Coleman with the kick there. Ball will remain with the Celts. Kelly Simmons and Carly Leong will be coming in to replace Coleman and Lemoncello. We saw Leong with a couple of high energy plays in the first half, including an incredible shot that she made falling on the floor. Probably couldn't even see her own bucket go in. And she's back in playing some good defense on McGee, contesting that shot. McGee wanted the foul, but no such call from the referees. And now Leong on the other end, guarded by Adriana Chavez. Callie Simmons in the corner. Shipley gets it out to Milton, who puts some nice moves on the Kelt defender, Rodriguez. And she gets that little teardrop to go. Nice dribbling from Milton. And a quickly a turnover, Robbins, right back to Milton, who tries to put some more moves, this time on Castillo. But Castillo doing just enough to force that one out and give her team another shot here. Trinity flashing the handles. We don't always see that. But the pump fake, the hesitation, the crossover, they're all in action tonight for the Tigers. Yeah, typically we see Milton spotting up from three and Shipley being the one to drive, talking to Coach Shotland about that, how Coleman takes so much attention in the post that you need to have people to kick it out to, and Milton typically the one that spots up from three while Shipley cuts in. But Milton, like you said, showing some nice handles. 
a couple of consecutive balls knocked out that will stay with the Tigers. Yeah, Trinity converging on that ball and it was a bit awkward underneath. Leong almost knocking Shipley out of play. Last touch came off the Celts. Shipley faking it one way, going the other, and she had Evans fooled for just a moment. Foul on Castillo. Sydney Smith in for the Celts. First we've seen of her, the freshman from Katy, Texas. I mentioned this is a young roster for St. Thomas. So freshmen and sophomores galore. Rodriguez, who has had a tough time hanging on to the ball this evening, once again struggles but keeps it with the Celts. McGee using the screen from Evans. Evans has been pretty quiet today, but she tries to put one up from the mid-range, but that one sails way over the bucket. Evans had 11 points against Trinity, but scoreless today. That was just her first shot appearance, shot too, so not really getting many opportunities. Yeah, the most consistent scorer for the Celts has been Castillo, who's at three of three from outside. She's on the bench right now, and they're looking for help offensively. Just two points out on the floor right now with Chavez, Smith, McGee, Evans, and Rodriguez. That'll be the five when we return. We head into the break, Trinity up 50 to 28. Welcome back to Tiger Network. Been a good start to the half for Trinity, getting their field goal percentage much closer to what we're used to, 44%, right about their average, 43.7. Carly Leong joined by Emily Nelson, Kelly Simmons, Ashlyn Milton, and Maggie Shipley. Yeah, and Coleman wanted to check in at the timeout, so she's still waiting. As a really good finish underneath by Simmons. She would normally replace, although it looked like they were set to play together. So we'll see at the next opportunity. Reach in foul called on Milton. And her along with Nelson, shocked at that call, looked to get all ball. But they're gonna say she slapped the wrist of the Kelt ball handler. And that means McGee Headed to the line. Once again, the Celts getting in the bonus early on in the quarter. 4.15 to go, and they'll be headed to the line from here on out. They have yet to take advantage. That first one good, but St. Thomas just 7 for 15 from the free throw line. That's 46%. McGee this time gets both to go. And if they have any hope to cut into this big lead that Trinity has, they're going to have to knock down the free throws, especially that they're in the bonus here to finish the third quarter. Now a nice job, Evans, denying Coleman the ball. McGee has some room to work with, and Coleman unable to block that one. So a nice move from McGee. 
Yeah, nice possession on both ends, and Evans again with the steal. Four straight points for McGee, and she's looked really confident in doing it. Wouldn't be surprised if she gets the ball in this possession here once again. This time, Coleman does get the block as Chavez tried to get it over the senior. But Coleman says, not today. And yeah, Nelson tossing that ball to Leong and having to yell car mid-flight as Leong wasn't expecting it at all. Still able to grab it and draw the foul. Coach Cross letting her team know that a screen's coming and a switch. But that results in a wide open Bailey Timmons who drains a three. Yeah, big make for her. She struggled from outside this year. Shooting just 11% before that one and limited attempts. Straight fresh off the bench and into the scoring tonight. And just the second make from beyond the arc for the Tigers, two of 11. It's not their strong suit, third in the stack at just under 29% from three. Nelson now handling ball, handling duties with Robbins on the bench. And Coleman double teamed as she's been so often today. Timmons feeling good after that made three. Coleman getting her miss, but missing herself. So a couple of missed opportunities for the Tigers. Smith able to track it down in the corner. Rodriguez gets it right back. And Rodriguez and Smith there trying to get some open space there, trying to get it between them two, but nothing doing. They'll try here from the sideline. Some confusion here as to who the ball belongs to. Referees say white ball. Leong brings it in. Nelson brings it across half court. Nelson looked like she was going to use the screen from Coleman, but went the other direction. And then Timmons misses, but tips it back out, giving her team another shot. They set up their half-court offense once again, and Timmons this time trying to find Coleman. It goes off the foot of Anga. And Coleman steadied the ship a little bit, but it's still been pretty difficult for her out there. The post players for St. Thomas making sure she doesn't get anything easily. Besides as, that bucket. <laughs> yeah, as you say that with her prototypical mid-range jump shot that she's just so good at knocking down. And Smith now experiencing what Hamilton has gone through tonight. So much trouble getting the ball in. But a push will be called on Kelly Simmons, it looks like. And both teams will waltz on over to the other end of the court. So we mentioned the Celts in the bonus, so even though that foul occurred near their own basket, they will get two free throws off of it. First free throw good from Nelly Rodriguez. Junior from Houston, averaging just over six points a game. She had nine points against Trinity, as well as six rebounds and three steals. She started in that game today, coming off the bench. Those are her first points of the evening. Timmons unable to get that one, just slips right through her hands. This is an interesting dynamic between these two teams that played just a week ago. Normally when you get into the SCAC schedule, you see some separation between the times you face the same team, but Coach Shotland saying he likes when they get to play the same team pretty quickly. It makes it more about yourself and what you do to adjust and not relying on the other team because as he said, you're not gonna make any wholesale changes just one week to the other. And so it's just about 
nailing down what you did wrong and trying to continue to do what you do well. And so, so far, Trinity, while it hasn't been perfect, out to a 23-point lead. Yeah, and from what we got to see of that game in Houston, this has been a very similar contest. I mean, Trinity fixing things coming out of the halftime break after a slow half. I mean, that's pretty much how you'd sum it up as Timmons fires that one out of play. And we see Molly Pretty, who's not played a ton tonight. She could be the answer to the three-point shooting woes for the Tigers. She's had a couple of big games recently. Yeah, and a lot of new faces for the Tigers as once again we see all these bodies on the court. Nelson finding Pretty, who you just called on, and knocks down the three, making Ryan very happy. He predicted that. Star analyst Ryan Figger. She's the one making the shot. And that time, pretty unsure who would get the ball if she let it go out of bounds. Luckily for her, it does belong to the Tigers. But Molly Pretty, one of 10 players this season that have had a career high at one point or another. Just a phenomenal stat that shows what this team has dealt with. So much adversity, so many different starting lineups and units off the bench have given new opportunities to people and they've taken advantage. She's one of them, had 17 points against Dallas, hit five three-pointers in that game. Ball that went up at nine points against these Celts as well before going scoreless in Colorado. But she's up off the bench for three points. And the runner at the end of the quarter, Timmons puts way too much on it, ends up cannoning off the shot clock. But we've got 10 minutes to go. And Trinity in firm control, 60 to 34. We'll be right back with the final period of play on the Tiger Network. Welcome back to Tiger Network. Just 10 minutes separate the Tigers from their 12th consecutive victory. They lead by 26 over St. Thomas. And as we go from the third to the fourth quarter, we see acting head coach Joe Shotland. And the next logical step for him is to get out on the court. And from what he told us, Ryan, he is ready if needed. You know, he's a former player here for the Trinity men's basketball side, but he's put out a big challenge and he wanted to specifically go out on the record and say that he thinks he would beat Luka Doncic, two-time All-NBA, two-time All-Star, in an empty gym three-point shooting contest. So, Luka, if you're listening, Joe is ready. At Mavericks, at Luka Doncic, you have been challenged. You heard that Joe Shotland thinks he can beat you in a three-point contest. I mean, Ryan, you're a Mavericks fan. You're from the Dallas area. Do you think this is possible? I mean, Joe himself is a Mavericks fan. Is pretty. Pulls for three. Too strong on that one. And I think he, you know, he's saying it a little bit tongue-in-cheek. He has a lot of self-belief, as he has a lot of belief in his team as well. Uh, no is the answer. I don't know. I guess we'll have to find out. But the thing that stands out the most to me about that, not the crazy challenge, but that y'all have the confidence to admit that you're Mavericks fans here in San Antonio. It's been easy in recent years, I hate to say. This is still Spurs country though, Ryan. You know, the Spurs are my second team. 
I'm sure that disappoints many Mavericks fans as well as Leong gets the turnover here and gets the easy bucket on the other end. Leong has done a great job off the bench today for the Tigers. She's up to four points, three rebounds, an assist to go along with that. Yeah, and she's a consistent spark plug off the bench, averaging just around 10 points a game. She's played the most minutes of anyone not to start a game. That's pretty hoist up another three. Offensive rebound secured by Simmons. And an open look now for Limoncello, who comes up short. So Leong, you know, she's not a starter. She's the go-to bench option. And you know, that sixth player is just as important as having a strong starting five. That three way off for Rodriguez, who has really struggled today, just two points. And those both came from the free throw line. She's now 0 for 4, and she's looked visibly frustrated after a couple of turnovers. So just not been the day for the junior. You know, both teams shooting in the low 20s from three. It's not been the day for the long ball. Rodriguez trying to redeem herself, but still unable to get one to go from the field. And you have to wonder, this team, this program, doing so well when they first moved into the SCAC, winning the regular season championship. But as they enter and finish their third year of the transition to officially become a D3 member, we've already seen such a quality rivalry develop on the men's side between these two programs. So you have to believe and hope that these two teams can develop a similar rivalry for years to come. Yeah, and that's gonna come with recruiting, obviously coming in. We've got a lot of first year and sophomore players playing big minutes. So development with that group and then recruiting the next group to come in and bolster the squad. It's gonna be big for Coach Cross. And it's a team that had a really difficult tough to swallow into the year last year. They didn't even get to contest their playoff game against TLU after a four and four regular season. They were set for the quarterfinal matchup and that game was canceled because of COVID-19 issues within the team. So, you know, a lot to still prove for this particular crop of Celts at the division three level. And I think they're hoping to at least get a crack at postseason action when it comes down to it this year after, you know, that was taken away from them last season in such a disappointing manner. Coach Cross comes to the aid of her team with a timeout there and we'll head into the break. Seven minutes to play. Turn to the in front, 64-36. Welcome back to Tiger Network, where it is a real shame that y'all don't get to see our incredible videographer, audio engineer, do it all Ryan Cedillo just absolutely rock out to shout. He certainly is shouting. There's been a lot to shout about for Trinity fans. You know, looks like we're well on our way to two big wins against the University of St. Thomas. The men's game obviously carried a lot of weight as the SCAC championship game rematch. And that's what we'll have on Sunday for the women's team, Brian. Yeah, we were just talking about rivalries before the timeout. 
the men have really developed one with St. Thomas. But if there is a rivalry for this Trinity women's basketball team, it is certainly their fellow Tigers hailing from Colorado Springs. Colorado defeating Trinity right here in this gym twice in 2021 before the Tigers got their revenge when it mattered most in the SCAC championship game. But just last week, this Saturday, a crazy finish as the Tigers from Trinity defeated Colorado on a game-winning layup from Haley Coleman with just a half second remaining. And I know we're both very excited to have both Tigers here at Calgar Gym on Sunday. Yeah, not only that, it was Colorado College without Anna Finelli as Milton rolls in a three, starting group out there for their last rotation of the game and making life difficult once again defensively for the Celts. Anna Finelli, if you don't know, is one of the leading stars for Colorado College. She's one of the nation's assist leaders at the Division Three level. And we've been told that she's going to come back and play uh, in Sunday's game. So we're excited to see Colorado College closer to full strength and to really get a, a good matchup of the guards with Robbins uh, up against her. So definitely a lot to like about that game coming up. Like you mentioned, Trinity taking the SCAC championship game 73-63 against Colorado last year. Jordan Rudd with a crowning jewel on her Trinity career in that one, 22 points and a couple of assists. Now she's playing her trade up at the University of Texas Dallas, who are a team that's right in there with Trinity in the receiving votes category. As the ASC's been really strong on the women's side. Trinity got a first-hand glimpse at that early in the season. There are two losses up against ETBU and Harden-Simmons, who are both highly rated teams in the D3 Hoops National Poll. Referee saying that's their fault, inadvertent whistle. But Ryan, I think Trinity wants to recreate that championship game from last year in many ways except for one, and that was that they did it in front of an empty gym as fans were not allowed in the stands. But it is a completely different story now in 2022. Fans are welcome, and we really hope to have you here, the women play at three, the men play just before them at one. There was some great energy right before this game as the men pulled out that huge victory against St. Thomas, their first victory here against the Celts. So we hope that Sunday will be just as energetic for both the men's and women's games. If not, we'll have it right here for you on the Tiger Network as always, one and 3 p.m. Yeah, if you're in town, you know, there's Nowhere else that you should be at 1 and 3 o'clock on Sunday. Both of the games going down to the wire in Colorado Springs. And the rematches should be just as exciting here in Calgar Gym. For St. Thomas, Morin, who looked good at the start of this game and knocked down a 3, has really struggled ever since. Just 6 points and 1 for 7 from the field with that 1-3 very early on. Milton unable to get that one to go. She is two for eight, two for nine now from three, but she is determined to find the ball again and gets the easy two points. Trinity up 71 to 36 with just under five minutes to go. Olivia Anga in the open court with a nice bounce pass to Evans. She puts a nice move to get under the bucket and into the scoring category, Evans mentioned was a little quiet in the first half scoreless, but now four points in this second half. Morin doing a nice job there, driving off the turnover. But too little too late for the Celts who trail by 31 with four minutes to go. Coleman continues to show her passing prowess as she finds a driving Milton. Yeah, and things really opening up for Maggie Shipley. Off the pass that time from Coleman. She saw a lot of her open and contested layups fall off the rim in the first half. She's been able to write that here in the second. And the recipient of another great bounce pass from Coleman. She puts it up for two more points, up to 16 in the game. 
and such unselfish play from Coleman. We'll see if the starters survive this timeout. All five were still on the court and was just going to say on double-double watch, Coleman with eight points and ten rebounds. Looked like she could have put that one up, but just so unselfish getting the ball to her teammate Shipley. And so we'll see if she'll get the opportunity to finish that double-double, but we'll find out after this timeout. Tigers up 35 with three minutes to go. Welcome back to Tiger Network, where the starters didn't quite survive that timeout, just Maggie Robbins remains. But she is joined by a new cast of characters, Jennifer Tierney, Bailey Timmons, who has seen some action today, Brittany Goodwin, and Ali Beck to finish things out for the Tigers. Brittany Goodwin in there for the first time since December 30th against Letourneau, so nearly a month between action for the senior from Rockport. Yeah, it looks like even Robbins is going to be replaced here as the shot clock's winding down. And they get something towards the basket, but it doesn't catch iron. Nelson's waiting at the scorer's table as Robbins will run one final possession for the Tigers. Would love to know why Robbins stayed after the timeout, if she was going to come out right after, but I'm sure there's a reason. This good wins pass nearly gets away from Timmins. And a nice effort from Castillo, but the ball will remain with the Tigers. Mentioned Goodwin hasn't played a whole lot this year, but Jennifer Tierney and Ali Beck have gotten some action. As we mentioned, this Tigers team has faced some adversity and had to have some different people step up, and those are two players who have had some career highs. Ali Beck scoring six against Howard Payne, and Tierney scoring 10 points against Howard Payne as well. And Tierney just having to throw that one up. Called for a travel, trying to do so as the shot clock was expiring. Tigers have made their last three free throw, three field goals, sorry. McGee gets past Goodwin. McGee looking good today. That's eight points for her, three of six from the field. She's been one of the most efficient Celts today. And she's just a freshman from Houston, so lots of talent there to build on for her and her team. Rodriguez gets the steal there. Rodriguez with the step back, and she drills that three, so what's been a difficult game for Rodriguez doesn't stop her from a nice step back there. Just a minute and a half left, but showing some good fight here are the Celts. Some of their starters still in there. And a great bucket from Nelson gets the Tigers bench on their feet. And a round of applause. Similar to the one we saw from Leong earlier, just almost falling out of bounds, but gets it to go off the glass. Yeah, really nice runner. And body control just to kiss it off the glass and in. The lowest Trinity have held their opponent to this season, 48, against the University of Dallas in that conference game. So the Celts currently at 45 or threatening that. Let's see if the Trinity defense can hold their opponents to a new season low.
Bourgeois, the freshman from Katy, will be headed to the line. This roster filled with people from the Houston area, fourth largest city in the country, with suburbs galore, Pearland, Richmond, Cyprus, Katy, you name it. First one goes for Bourgeois. She gets on the board for the first time. She was scoreless in 17 minutes against Trinity last week. So good to see her get on the board. Yeah, and good to see we got that shout out in for the suburbs that we were looking for. We know where you're from has plenty of suburbs in Dallas and Houston has even more. San Antonio with all the random cities right next to each other that call themselves cities. Alamo Heights, Terrell Hills, Almas Park, Leon Springs, so many, all within just a few miles of one another. And Brittany Goodwin gets on the board, averaging just one point a game, so she doubles out with that bucket. Yeah, it's her first field goal of the season, and it looked pure from the baseline. Bourgeois not going to settle for the free throws, going to get a bucket of her own from the field. And just about done here in San Antonio, what looked like a sloppy start for the Tigers once again turns into a second half to remember. They do such a good job adjusting at the half and coming out of the locker room strong as Timmons can't get that one to roll in. We'll see if the Celts put up one more shot. Rodriguez somehow able to save it, but we'll see if she dribbles it out or puts it back up. She drives to the bucket, gets two more points, and makes this final score 79 to 51. Trinity Tigers improve their record to 13 and two and extend their winning streak to 12 in a row. Tigers five and zero at home yet to lose here at Caldgar Gym and a really nice performance from Ashlyn Milton, 20 points after she struggled in the first quarter, finishes going eight for 18 from the field. She had some help from her friends, Maggie Shipley into double digits with 16. And on the Celt side, struggled to score with just 51 points, but had Olivia Anga with 10 points and Alex Castillo with 10. Ryan, it's been a crazy day of basketball here in Calgar Gym, the first time in a while that we get to call the back-to-back -back of the men and the women. What are your thoughts after seeing this dominant performance from the women's team? Yeah, it's just what we expected, you know, right in line with the first match between these two teams. But I think immediately, eyes now turning to Sunday and what's going to be an exciting rematch of that terrific game just a week or so ago in Colorado and, of course, of the SCAC championship game last season as well so definitely be sure to either show up you know show your support here in Calgar gym or tune in once again on the tiger network for that one for next up for st thomas they'll be at shriner tomorrow at six o'clock and what is a pretty big matchup for the celts trying to move up into the middle of the pack of the scac standings but it'll be a heavyweight matchup here in san antonio and i'm excited to be on the call once again with you for that one, Brian. You know, thank you very much for your time. If you stuck with us through both games, you know, you're a Trinity super fan and we appreciate you. Tonight, it's the women's team winning 79 to 51 and that'll do it for us. We'll see you then.